Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Shivani Gupta and our focus continues to be on India and Russia, kick-starting their new era in their diplomatic relationships with this maiden 2 plus 2 dialogue earlier today. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh mentioned the unprovoked aggression at India's northern border in his opening statement. This is, of course, a direct reference to Chinese aggression at the LSE in Ladakh, where the Red Dragon tried to unilaterally change the status quo. India had faced unprovoked aggression on its northern borders for more than a year, said Rajnath Singh today. This even as India and Russia renewed the military technical cooperation agreement for another 10 years till 2031 and also signed the deal for the manufacture of AK-203 assault rifles. USA and China are the two elephants in the room as President Vladimir Putin and Prime Minister Narendra Modi meet today. But even as India tried to balance its military procurements with USA, the greater focus in is on what the message to China is and what can be achieved in taming the dragon. Before we discuss that, let's listen in to what the Defence Minister had said. The pandemic, the extraordinary militarization and expansion of armament in our neighbourhood and the unprovoked aggression on our northern border since early summer of 2020 have thrown in several challenges. India is confident of overcoming these challenges with its strong political will and inherent capability of its people. Recognizing that its development needs are colossal and that its defense challenges are legitimate, real and immediate, and India seeks partners who are sensitive and responsive to India's expectations and requirements. So with uh, Vladimir Putin in India, what's really the message to China? Let me go across to our guest joining us. Lieutenant General KJ Singh, former General Officer, Commanding-in-Chief of Western Command, Patikrit Pine, Geopolitical Analyst, also Ambassador Anil Trigunayat, former diplomat, all joining us. Let me go across to Lieutenant General KJ Singh first up. What do you believe is the most potent message to China Given this visit by Putin to India, the 2 plus 2 dialogue, the defense deals being signed and all of it. See, Shivani, one potent message is that India is sending a message of plurilateralism. Mm -hmm. It's not completely in the American camp. Even when we are engaging with Quad, it is as a reactionary measure and more to ensure the law of commons and such practices in the South China Sea and Indo-Pacific. Mm -hmm. So to that extent, uh, Russia is a country we cannot decouple with in a hurry. Our defense manufacturing is tied up with Russia. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got Su-30s, we've got uh, MiG, we've got now AK-203 deal going through. And for seven years, there is going to be technology transfer. Kamov helicopters are there, our submarine project and the nuclear submarine project has been traditionally been linked with to Russia. And we've got T-90 and T-72 tanks and a large number of ammunitions. We, we are building the uh, largest fleet of T-series of tanks in the world, mm -hmm. much larger than even Russia. So in such a process, the continued commitment of Russia to our defense manufacturing is a very strong positive message which Chinese should pick up. And I would also like to qualify it by one thing. Mm -hmm. We have never stolen technology from Russia. See, even like when I was in the army, we never gave private manufacturers any design, anything without Russian approval. And as a result, we continued our dependency on Russia. But China hasn't done it. Mm -hmm. In the recent uh, uh, hypersonic missile case, it is coming out that China has stolen technology. So Russia must realize this. and engage with us meaningfully and do a genuine transfer of technology to us, to empower us and enable us. We are a huge big market. And the other thing which is there is, Russia is a great balancer for us. We need openings into dialogue with Iran mm -hmm. and also on Afghanistan process. Yes. Like we are not part of Troika Plus, but we need a place in Moscow format. We need to be relevant to that process and here, Russia can be a great balancer for us. Absolutely. So all in all, all in all, uh, 
both in manufacturing and in balancing hmm. uh, very symbolic messages. And I hope cooperation is extended into energy and technology and other sectors. Hmm. Professor Brahma Chalini, uh, strategic affairs expert, is also joining us. There is no denying that Russia and India both are sending a message that, you know, they can have independent relationships with countries who may have uh, either a very strong or deteriorating relationships with other countries. So it wouldn't really affect their relationships. So Russia, would you agree, is also sending a message to China saying that, you know, your relationship with India may de uh, deteriorate. But that doesn't mean that India will no longer be as close an ally as it has always been. What do you think, uh, from India's perspective, would be the message that is going to China today? Well, the message is very clear. First, uh, look at this thing. In the last two years, Putin has not left Russia mm. other than once yes. to meet Biden in Geneva in June. So this is the second time he has left Russia mm. to come to New Delhi. So the fact that he has chosen to come to New Delhi, despite his uh, new aversion to international travel, clearly underscores the importance that India has for Russia. Second, just as India doesn't, doesn't want to be over-reliant on the U.S., mm -hmm. Russia does not want to be over-dependent on China. Unfortunately, what has happened is that American policy, especially the American sanctions policy, mm. has compelled Moscow to pivot to China. But Russia's long-term concern is China. So the irony is that American policy has forced two natural competitors, hmm. Russia and China, to become allies of convenience when they should actually not be close partners. So, uh, you, Brahma Chalani, you when you say the... that their long-term concern is China, what do you mean exactly? Well, Russia is the largest country in the world in terms of land area. Yes. And next to that is a demographic giant, China, mm -hmm. with 1.4 billion people, a resource-hungry economy, hmm. which is committing Russia's resources. And there's also a demographic change taking place in Russia's Far East with illegal Rus Chinese migration hmm. into the Russian Far East. Hmm. So Russia naturally is very concerned about China. It, it, it is concerned about Chinese expansionism. It's concerned about the fact that Russia slash Soviet Union's decline mm -hmm. uh, benefited China primarily. Mm -hmm. It was China that filled the space from Russia's decline. So Russia and China are not natural strategic partners. They are natural strategic competitors. It's American policy mm. that has forced Russia to pivot to China. Interesting. Uh, if you so look at can I just ask you, would, would you suggest yeah. that India can actually become a greater ally of Russia than China in recent times? Yes, of course. It can. It can. Mm. Um, I think this can happen if there is some change in American policy toward Russia. The Americans have to realize that unless and until they wean Russia from its strategic lines on China, mm -hmm. dealing with the growing China threat will not be possible. After all, if you want to deal with China, you have to have Russia on your side. Mm -hmm. You can't alienate Russia. You can not force to, to align itself with and this compounds your challenge vis-a-vis -vis China. So if the American policy begins to appreciate this particular principle, mm -hmm. then Russia-India relationship will take off. India and Russia are old friends. Yes. You know, these, uh, in, for India, Russia is a tried and tested partner. Mm. And Moscow today is facing uh, uh, sanctions uh, onslaught. And that's the primary reason why it has moved closer to China. But strategically, I understand that Brahma Chalene, your audio is breaking up a little bit. Let me just get that sorted and I'll come back to you. Pratikrit Pine, very interesting what Chalene, uh, Mr. Chalene is saying. 
because ordinarily the belief is that you know we can have our independent relationship with china but the russia china friendship is not going anywhere he on the other hand is suggesting that india can actually become the more preferred one than china for russia uh, shivani brahmachalani mentioned it beautifully let me tell you the biggest reason as he rightly mentioned that the russians are moving towards china is because of the katsa sanctions that the americans have put the reason being simple the americans today face tremendous uh, competition in the energy sector not just in defense but the energy sector where the biggest market of europe has has traditionally been of the russians the americans had put sanctions on the nord stream uh, you know project so so that is one reason that they have done it and the russians have no option but to sell it to the chinese because the china is the only country apart from india which does not accept the american sanctions and actually take the russian uh, pro products but let me also tell you the rush the chinese are completely notorious in terms of reverse engineering and taking away all the technology copying it uh, the indians have never done it as was rightly mentioned by one of the previous panelists now the russians are also hedging it against the chinese because they also know that indians apart from the fact that they have respect for proprietary technology be it space be it, be it nuclear submarines be it other areas india is also a rising economy and in the next one or two one and a half decades india is going to be one of the top three economies of the world mm -hmm. and so this is why it you know the russians are also looking at it that way that their dependence on china cannot go, go beyond the point second important point is among the six wars that the chinese have planned and it had come out as in literature in the chinese uh, media hmm. that among the six wars that they want have planned to fight one of the war which they want to fight between 1945 to 2050 will be against russia for some of the lands in far east uh russia which the chinese claim as theirs and remember the russians have no love lost for the chinese because they have also fought in the past so the it is the compulsion of russian uh, you know government to move towards the chinese because of uh, american uh, idiosyncrasy i would say nothing mm -hmm. else and the second part is also important if the push comes to a shock in south china sea the only country which is in talking terms both with russia mm. and the west is india and if, if there is but if the push comes can... to shove between india and china what will russia do let me for us that's the only this. question that no, matters uh, shivan shivani this is a very important question and also let me tell you you know apart from the economic interdependence that india and china has uh, india and china has towards each other hmm. russia would also not want to see two of its closest allies fight against each other and also let me tell you the russians are equally apprehensive about the encroachment that the chinese are doing in central asia with the mm. chinese Rus russians always considered as their own strategic backyard so there are issues going on russia is hedging against china as well and at the same okay. time if there is one you know the americans have no talking terms with the chinese the chinese don't listen to the americans but they would listen to the russians for a lot of reasons for a lot of reasons including okay. the issue of I, I want to bring in ambassador period. anil trigunath also in, you know for a long time or for many many issues dip, uh, diplomatic issues we always lament that countries say one thing but you know there are so many machinations behind the scenes there are so many self interests that what they do is another thing but here several of my guests are suggesting that actually china is pissing off a lot of countries or a lot of countries are wary of it so when india today raises the expansionism the encroachment that other guests are also mentioning that russia is also worried about ambassador uh, trigunanay do you believe that the world can actually come together in a way where the strategic partnerships move away from china despite its global presence and obviously you know some of the weight that it carries because of its expansionism well that is true to a great extent uh, uh, and i fully agree with your previous panelists who spoken about it but the fact remains that uh, if you see the pentagon report it refers to russia as the first country of concern for them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the competitor and this is the uh, us russia uh, competition by way of sanctions or whatever uh, it has really led the uh, sino russian Uh, Bonhomie to some extent, and uh, I do not uh, fully agree with the fact that uh, Russia and China uh, do not coordinate on various policy issues because Russia and China together work in the multilateral organization much more than they do with many other countries mm. in the world, and that is just to against the West. So that is something that is that serves their ends as far as their political objectives are concerned. as far as india is concerned this is a stand alone relationship and we must look at it in that context from india's perspective its strategic autonomy which it is showing is ensured it has been um, displayed to the world 
whether it is US or anybody else, whether it is China for that matter. I mean, China is not happy that India is getting S-400. Sure. They objected to it, but the Russians went ahead and gave it to us. Americans are not happy. They're trying to plan massive sanctions or whatever against India, but the Indians have gone ahead with it. Similarly, there are many other things that we will... Right. Again, facing some issue with you, uh, the S-400 uh -huh. delivery is extremely important because, you know, China yes. was one of the first foreign buyers, was the first foreign buyer, in fact, from Russia of that, uh, you know, system. And it is one of the most advanced systems. And the fact that Ambassador is pointing out for them to go ahead and give it to India despite USA issues, despite China issues, is, of course, a matter of... Uh, strength as far as the Indo-Russian relationship is concerned. But I have in the final few minutes, I want to come to the bottom line. The bottom line, Lieutenant General, is, for example, when the Defence Minister mentions the aggression at our northern borders, how can Russia help as far as that Chinese see, aggression is concerned? See, it is uh, well known that the first round of discussions after Galwan happened after some talks which had taken place in Moscow. Hmm. Our foreign minister was there and then Russia nudged China to get to the talking table. Hmm. So China has some degree of influence with, uh, correction, Russia has some degree of influence with China and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is hope and I, I, I am, because Russia has interest in both countries hmm. and it will not like to lose uh, partnership and market in both countries. India is also a huge big defense market. Uh, and certain other technologies. So, uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a rising economy. So, I would tend to believe that Russia behind the scene will like to nudge China to be more responsible, to adhere to the treaties which have been uh, signed. Because after all, this all problem started because China unilaterally yes. just, just jettisoned those treaties, you know, those protocols. Yeah. So, it is Two nuclear armed powers like India and China cannot exist in this state on their borders. Now, so here's the only reason countries. I express some uh, concern or skepticism here. And uh, uh, Brahmachalini, I want to come to you on that. It's been, what, quite a bit of time, uh, you know, nearly two years since this standoff has been happening. And China's not blinking. Those co commander level talks are not going anywhere. So, when it comes to India's real national security challenges and concerns that the Defence Minister and others are mentioning, can Russia really come to our help? Russia can come to India's help. Sorry, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Brahmachalini, unfortunately, I'm not getting a very clear audio line with you. I'll request if maybe we can pick his audio line through a phone line or something. But in the meantime, Patrick, if you can take that uh, question. Shivani, I, I think that on the you know uh, daily negotiations or, or the military level talks and this and that, I don't think the Russians will get involved in that. What the Russians are very much into, and because this is a this is this is this phase off will continue because you know both are emerging. I mean, India is emerging, and eventually they are going to be the biggest competitor of China in the years to come. No, but China and Russians India cannot truly really be sure. compared. No, Patikrit, let's be realistic. No, no, I'm not. I, I agree. But in terms of purchasing power parity, we are the third largest economy sure. in the world, only after United States and China, and we are a ten trillion dollar economy. Yes, we are not comparable to China, but we are moving. The, the only country which is growing, you know, significantly is India. See, hmm. what the Russians will do hmm. is to make sure that these daily face-offs, small skirmishes, do not take the you know the shape of a full-fledged war, and it doesn't lead to a situation where the Chinese will go all out or the Indians will go all out. Okay, that is I what think the Professor Brahma Chalani is also back with us. I have a minute left. Yes, Mr. Chalani, please finish your point. Well, ever since the Chinese aggression began against India in April May of last year, Russia has been very well defensive equipment to India. For example, India has requested on a means to provide certain equipment, including ammunition. Hmm. All that stuff Russia has provided. So that, that help has been vital for India's defense, and that help Russia has really provided. In terms of providing public support, hmm. that won't happen because Russia has to balance its relations with China and India. Hmm. It has sold S-400 
system to China mm. and it's selling the same system to India. Mm. Uh, American policy needs to change, needs to understand that due to China threat, US, India, Japan and others will need Russian cooperation. Yeah. That change will bring about a fundamental shift in international geopolitics. Okay. I have to leave it at that. A big thanks to all of our guests for joining us. But uh, even as uh, we discuss India-Russia uh, relationship and the next gear with this 2 plus 2 dialogue, let me also quickly play out what Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said after uh, greeting Vladimir Putin, Russian president, in his opening statements. covid our special and privileged strategic partnership is मजबूत होती गई है। कोविड के खिलाफ लड़ाई में भी दोनों देशों के बीच बेहतरीन सहयोग रहा। चाहे वैक्सीन ट्रायल्स और उत्पादन में हो, मानवीय सहायता के लिए हो, या एक दूसरे के नागरिकों की देश वापसी के लिए हो। आर्थिक क्षेत्र में भी अपने रिश्तों को और घनिष्ठ 30 बिलियन डॉलर के ट्रेड और 50 बिलियन डॉलर के निवेश का लक्ष्य रखा है इन लक्ष्यों तक पहुंचने के लिए हमें अपने बिजनेस कम्युनिटीज को गाइड करना चाहिए विभिन्न सेक्टरों में आज हुए हमारे समझौतों से इसमें मदद मिलेगी मेक इन इंडिया कार्यक्रम के तहत को डेवलपमेंट और को प्रोडक्शन से हमारा रक्षा सहयोग और मजबूत हो रहा है स्पेस और सिविल न्यूक्लियर क्षेत्रों में भी हमारा सहयोग all right, uh, and even as we end this edition, here's a reminder of how there are stricter norms coming into play, especially for passengers. For example, those going into the United States, new stricter rules have come into effect from today as the country is witnessing a surge in COVID cases. CNN's Mandy Gather brings you this report. With that, it's a goodbye for me. More than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases per day. That's what the U.S. is now averaging, the highest number of reported infections in two months. 99.9% .9 of them are the Delta variant. While Delta remains a threat, U.S. health officials have detected the new Omicron coronavirus variant in more than a dozen states. And starting today, new travel rules for anyone entering the U.S. Nearly all passengers must have a negative COVID-19 test one day before departure. Any foreign national who travels to the U.S. must be fully vaccinated and the federal mask requirement for people in travel hubs like airports and those using public transportation like planes, trains and buses will remain through March. We'll be able to manage the uh, the new testing requirement and, and very much support the extension of the mask mandate. Travel industry leaders say any restrictions should be placed on individual passengers, not entire countries. Right now, the U.S. has a travel ban on South Africa and several other Southern African nations. But officials say those bans are being reevaluated every day. We need to figure out how to balance not only uh, the economy and the health concerns uh, simultaneously, but we also need to, to think about uh, making sure that we can still welcome international travelers here to the U.S.